Hey, everybody, climate guys coming at you. Got my country jacket on. Just got it the other day. Hey, listen. So, there's some people out there who are clearly anti-Murdoch people, which is fine. You want to believe like a sheep and follow what anybody tells you that he's guilty because they say he's guilty. Um, then you feel free and go ahead. And you be that sheep and you follow him down the trail. However, someone even said, they said I read his book, which they didn't. Uh, they said he took a lot of liberties in filling in the planks without evidence. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about because every single instance when I talk about an experiment I did or how Alec didn't do it, I give you the prosecution's evidence. And they hear. Here's what the evidence is. Here's what they said it was. And here's what I'm telling you. It does. Get on to the absolute second. I mean, you don't like that. Then again, follow the rest of the sheep over the edge. That's what you do. But to prove my point, because everybody loves the prosecution, and hey, they're fine folks, you know, I'm sure they go to church, and, uh, but the problem is, is that they went into this thinking Alec is guilty. And of course, he's innocent. You gotta go into it like he's innocent. And to prove him guilty. Now, they were gonna show you evidence that thought he was guilty. But, if you want to talk about people who took liberties, <laughs> just watch these interviews of these four prosecutors in the Murdoch case. And we're going to talk about it when I get back. I want you to listen closely to what they are saying. Words specifically. Crazy. Crazy that Alex was doing some weird things in the days after the, the, the murders, uh, particularly at Alameda, his mom's home or his parents' old home. Um, best guess would be that he had hid them there at Alameda in the wood line or there's many sheds there that um, he had about 10 minutes or so, I believe is what his OnStar shows. He had about 10 minutes before he actually went inside the house hid them there, and then um, I believe from Shelley's testimony, we established that he went back to Almeida and uh, was doing some weird arranging with some of the cars. Um, and, our, you know, we, this is only speculation, but you're very close to uh, many rivers. You're very close to a swamp. You're very close to the ocean. Um, he had access to boats, to um, cars. He, you know, they could be anywhere. They, yeah. they are likely at the bottom of some body of water. When I look at that evidence and I think about it, I'm fairly certain that uh, Paul uh, was shot pretty quickly after his phone locks, probably within a minute or two. Uh, and then I think at that time, Maggie's kind of walked around the corner, uh, maybe to the vehicle her phone was in or wherever she had set it down. Uh, she had picked it up just to read a text, uh, and then I think she hears shots, and I think she very immediately puts her phone down and goes to see what's going on. I don't think she had sensed danger up to that point, because if she had, she probably would have kept her phone with her. Uh, but, you know, this is this is Moselle. I think, I don't know if you all have been out there. But I said, if I am, I want to remember that, because if Bubba hadn't barked, Alex wouldn't have talked, perhaps. So, yeah, I thought that was powerful. Uh, and God bless Bubba and Cash. And it kind of fit in. You know, they're talking about it, as Mr. Waters and others brought out. You know, he got the conversation going with Rogan. And then it stops. And he's sending the video. Well, yeah, it stopped because he killed him. <laughs> so, um, I, I, Bubba was um, real and, and important. To me, I thought that was the biggest surprise, this thing with the um, shooters being 5'2 or 5'4. That was also kind of like, you can't determine that from what our expert had said and you know we prepared extensively um, him and Dr. Reamer and for somebody to try to determine the height seemed to just go a little yeah. too far. Yeah, I've never seen that before in a trial where you gave the exact height of the shoot but 
Well, what did you think of that? Let me just go through some highlights for you. The first attorney, oh, Alec was doing some weird things. His, he says his best guess, his best guess? He just sent away a man for life. This is your best guess? Said he took 10 minutes to hide the weapons, but no blood was found anywhere. Uh, weird arranging of vehicles at his parents' house. And he, then he says, this is only speculation. Only speculation? You said you, you, you had him. Second guy says the words, fairly certain. Fairly certain? You're fairly certain. I just sent this guy away from life without parole, but I'm fairly certain of this. Then he says, probably within a minute or two. Probably? Uh, then he says, I think she heard shots. I think she put her phone down. I don't think she senses danger. She probably didn't think of immediate danger. Well, I've said that a hundred times. Apparently, they don't blame me. Uh, the third one, meters. Uh, if Bubba hadn't barked, Alex would have talked. Wouldn't have talked. Wouldn't have. Because I thought that was powerful. I don't know what that means. Uh, if Bubba hadn't barked. Um, he says it kind of fit in. Kind of? It kind of. I just sent this man away for prison for his entire life. But it kind of fits in. Uh, then he says, yeah, he got the conversation going with Rogan. Then it stops. Well, it stops. Uh, yeah, because he killed him. Mm. No, Paul stopped the video. And then Paul tried attempting to send the video. And then five minutes later, after Alex had left, it was back in his house. Then they were killed. Five minutes later. May want to check your own timeline, which I use. But you apparently don't. And then the fourth one, the woman, says, you can't determine from that, whatever that is. She goes, but this is important. From what our expert said, you know, we prepared, extensively prepared. They prepared the witness extensively. Uh, their expert, the gun expert, and Dr. Reamer. So, everything Dr. Reamer said, she was our uh, prepared by the prosecution. So, let me go back to what I said in my original statement. Somebody says that I took a lot of liberties in my, in my book defending Alec Murdoch, not guilty by reasonable doubt. I will tell you that it was the prosecution that did it, and I am the only one in the history of the Alec Murdoch case that has actually used the damn timeline. I support the evidence. The prosecution never has. Me. You tell me one other person in this country, in the entire planet Earth, who has done what I have done in my book. I will tell you, no one. Because they all come with this, oh, he's got to be guilty, or so complex, or it's, what a body, why he died. The evidence, like I did. Read my book. We'll see. Brown Casco.